Hey CMers, today I'm going to be showing you a simple approval process that I've come up with. At the beginning of this year I was asked to do some uh, R&D and one of the challenges I got asked to do was to come up with an, an approval process, just a simple one, just using customization and configuration, so zero development. So I had a look at the CM 2013 features and decided to incorporate it in the approval process. So this is what I'm going to be showing you today. On my screen I've got an opportunity record open and there's this fancy looking area up here on top of the record and this is a business process flow. A business process flow is made up of stages and within each stage there are steps that guides the end user before they proceed to the next stage. So to proceed to the next stage they just need to click on that but ideally they would have completed all the steps in here. Now these steps are just fields that are related to the opportunity. So if you have fields in the opportunity you can pretty much customize um, each stage by adding or removing um, fields that will equal the steps that the end user needs to fill. There is a icon here which is a flag in a blue circle and it indicates to the end user where they currently are in the business process flow. So as soon as I click on next stage what you're going to see is the flag will move from qualify to develop and the qualify stage will have a tick on the left hand side and if you hover your mouse cursor over it it's going to indicate that it is completed. So that is a business process flow. Um, so I utilized this in the approval process that I came up with um, and I also created um, custom fields So in the opportunity entity, I created custom fields of approved, approved by, um, quote generated, and request approval. Um, I added two of those custom fields to the opportunity form. So I'm just going to scroll down and show you to the approved by section. Um, so there's approved and approved by that I've added to the form. You'll notice that the approved field has a key icon and that's because I enabled field security. So to enable field security there's a f option within the field record and by default it will be disabled. Um, so to enable it you just need to click on this radio button, save and close and publish. So one thing that you need to remember is field security can only be enabled for custom fields. You can't enable field security for um, system default fields such as, uh, for example, um, first name, last name and contact record. You can't enable field security for it. It's just how the system works. Um, so once I enabled field security for this field, I had to create a field security profile. So field security profiles, they were introduced, as well as um, field security was introduced in CRM 2011. It didn't exist in CRM 4.0, and obviously it's now being used in CRM 2013. So when you enable field security, you need to also create a field security profile because this will allow certain end users to have certain levels of access to this field on your record. So I created one for the approver, um, so I just added the user and I gave them the ability to update the field, whereas for a user that isn't an approver, I just added them and I also um, only gave them access to read the field but they can't update it, so only the approver can update it. The next thing that I did was 
I replicated one of the uh, out of the box business process flows. I added a stage called quote and within the stage is where I added uh, three of my custom fields so that before the end user can proceed to the next stage the opportunity record has to be approved and I've made it required so I've made approved required because they can't move on to the next stage until it has been approved um, and I'll show you how that works in combination with field security and to go one step further I decided to create um, a couple of simple workflows so when the opportunity has been requested to be approved an email is sent to the approver whereas when the approver approves the record sorry approves the opportunity record the email will then be sent to the opportunity owner. So just to give you an example of what I did, I created my workflow using the CRM 2013 real-time workflows. Um, by default when you create a workflow it will be an asynchronous workflow. So what that means is when the workflow is triggered it gets put aside and it basically um, gets in a queue and it gets in touch with the asynchronous processing service whereas a real-time workflow just executes immediately and this is brand new in CM 2013 it didn't exist in CM 2011 or CM 4.0 previously a CM developer would have to do something cool and fancy to make it real time uh, okay so I put criteria in here where if the request for approval equals yes in the process stage is quote then send an email to Jane for approval um, I made the scope organization as well as made it execute as the user who made changes to the record so that um, we know that it was last modified by the user rather than the um, person who owns the workflow. Um, I won't get too much into detail about that. I'll provide a link to Gareth Tucker's blog that explains this. Um, yeah. Okay, so now that I've shown you what I have done um, let's go and see how this works. So I'm logged in as a salesperson and you'll notice that John Smith, who I'm logged in as, can't update the approved by Jane field um, because this is the approved field where I enabled field security. and. The only access I gave the salesperson was read access, so they can't ever um, change it. So what should happen now is when I click yes to request for approval and I hit save, the real-time workflow will be executed. Okay, I don't know why that happened. Real-time workflow will be executed just wait for the form to load and the email should then arrive in Jane's inbox so I'm logged in as Jane and we'll just wait for this email to come through I'm crossing my fingers that this is going to work <laughs> all right so now it's just a waiting game so we'll just wait for the email Cool, 
So here's the email. Now I think because of that error that was fired, um, it came through twice. I will look into that, but for now you can see that Jane Doe, who is the approver, has received the email. Um, so this was as a result of the real-time workflow. So Jane can click on the link and since Jane has signed in, it'll take her to the opportunity record. Otherwise, I did create a, another view where she can look at all the opportunities that require approval. Um, so basically, she goes into the opportunity, she reviews the quotes, she likes it, then she can approve it. Um, so you notice that that lock symbol isn't there anymore, so let me just quickly switch back. So we were seeing this lock symbol here for John Smith, um, but because Jane has been enabled to update this particular field on the opportunity record and no one else can, um, she's not seeing this padlock. So ideally what should happen now is when I click yes, so pretend she's reviewed it and she's okay with it, and she saves it, again, that real-time workflow will be triggered where an email will be sent to John Smith so that he is aware that this opportunity has now been approved and that he can go ahead and send the quotes to the customer. So again, it's a waiting game. Let's wait for the email to come through. Okay. So this is an email. So John Smith um, has received an email and Jane Doe is also CC'd. So if I go back to Jane Doe's email um, inbox, there it is here. And I'm going to go back to the opportunity record. So ideally um, John Smith can click on that, it'll take him back to the opportunity record. Um, so this is what it looked like before the uh, before Jane approved it. So I'm just going to refresh my browser. And I should see that it has been approved. And now I can move on to the next stage. Cool. Um, that's pretty much it. So, as a recap, what I did was I created custom fields. I enabled field security for one of the fields, so that would be my uh, my variable for indicating whether the opportunity has been approved or not. I had to create the field security profiles and then I copied one of the out-of-the-box business process flows and created a new stage where I added my custom fields in the stage as steps and then I created two workflows where emails would be sent to the opportunity prover so in this example it was Jane and once the approver approves it, then the, an email is sent back to the owner of the opportunity. So in the example that I showed you was John Smith, the salesperson. And by using you know, the new features of business process flow and a real-time workflow, I was able to create a simple approval process. So I hope you found this very helpful.